Okay guys, so we have another update here for you. We got a few more rounds down this thing, and again, no issues to report as of yet, functionally, aside from that magazine insertion issue we talked about last time, and we'll go over that more in depth here today. Um, we'll talk about some of the changes from last time. As you can see, I got a different optic on here, so we'll talk about optic height uh, in relation to this Zukov stock. We'll talk about the mag paddle here and the release itself and the differences between something like a modern sporting rifle or AR compatible rifle. Um, <clears throat> the trigger guard and we'll talk about some of the similarities or differences between these two rifles. Um, of course, we'll go through that mag insertion issue, like I said. Um, how I got rid of the wiggle here, uh, pretty really extremely simple. Um, way to tighten that up. I didn't have an O-ring, but I'll tell you what I did. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll talk about the piston with no return spring and what kind of noise that generates. Uh, we'll talk about the bolt differences here and what that means for your magazines. We'll look at the wear in the upper receiver um, and how the bolt rides on these rods. And then, of course, we'll look at some other accuracy testing. I do have you know, besides the general 55 grain stuff, we got some 73 grain ELD match Hornady. We got some IMI M855, and we got some 
on the XTAC 62 green um, green tip. So we can take a look at targets and explain that later. So let's get into it. Okay, so like I mentioned, we have a different optic on here. This is just the uh, Vortex Crossfire um, red dot. I think it's a 2 MOA dot. Uh, it's $199 here in Canada. And it's on an ADM uh, lower third co-witness mount, as well as a uh, half inch or 0 0.6 inch um, riser here. I know it's janky, but it works. Anyway, with the height of this Zukov stock, like I explained earlier, I believe you need something a little higher. Um, I would suggest 1.5 inch at a minimum from pick rail to center line. And I did also check and try all the way up to uh, 2.7 inches here with this one inch riser in the 1.7 ADM. And that's okay too. It just, you know, it's a skyscraper on there. So I'm going to try this the way I got it set up now. It's about 2.25 inches from pick rail to center line. And I find that fairly comfortable. Um, so we're going to keep trying that out. Uh, I like the red dot just for some lighter weight, faster shooting, uh, close up stuff. So we'll we'll give that a go for a while instead of the one to six. Also, accuracy testing later that was done with this Arkin um, on a QD air attack. You may want to consider some sort of riser, maybe a higher mount. I've seen other guys use like a cheap pick rail half inch riser for a larger optic such as this, uh, whatever floats your boat, I guess. But this worked for me. So I'll insert some pictures here so you can see the differences and how scrunched up my face is versus a more heads up shooting position. Um, this is just what I prefer. I know it looks a bit like a skyscraper, but I don't care. It's functional. Anyway, beyond that, let's look at the uh, Magpul extended magazine release here that I have. I did replace the uh, paddle that came with. Gains me about a quarter inch. I need all that for my little hands. So I think that's working out a lot better. And just some minor differences I noticed is that, you know, I was looking at the mag catch for this over insertion issue. But I think, you know, the catch that's in here was a little more robust than the one I had lying around. But I did notice the bolt on the Siberian is actually shorter and the spring is shorter because the receiver's a little bit uh, more slender. So that is a difference there. Uh, another issue, or not issue, but uh, thing to talk about is just the trigger guard. I don't have a extended one yet, but I will be getting one for shooting with gloves as we are in Canada and it is cold. And I use gloves most of the time when shooting at this time of year. Um, but you can see here, like I mentioned last time, this, you know, gap here does provide a bit of you know, rubbing when you're out doing things, especially if you've got it supported with one hand while you're doing a mag change. And you could compare that to something like the ATRS Modern Support here, where it's an enlarged trigger guard to begin with. It's machined and it's just beautiful, nice, and like it just matches this uh, Magpul K2 Plus really well. Um, and then we can move on to a bad lever. I was hoping to just try it out and see if it would fit to make it consistent. But the issue is that the upper receiver here is not machined large enough to accept a standard uh, bolt catch. So theirs is a little bit shorter and the machining here is just large enough for the bolt catch. This is a pin in case I didn't mention it before. It is not a screw like on some other uh, rifles, but that's fine if you have proper tools. Um, but you know, Unfortunately, this won't fit without chopping it up, which I might consider, but I could also just learn to go up instead of down for the bad lever. So we'll keep on that and just get better, right? Get good.
So this ATRS Modern Sporter is quite similarly set up to the Siberian. It's a similar barrel profile, a similar weight. As you can see, my accessories are basically the same. They're very similar. You know, this is as close as what you're going to get, I guess, right now for a non-restricted rifle in Canada. Um, this one is tuned. It does have an adjustable gas block, so it is a little bit softer shooting. Although, you know, if you don't have a special buffer, you get the twang here that you don't get with the Siberian. But, you know, again, I it's 223. The differences between this and this or something else are minimal. They, you know, it's it's 223, it's 556, it's not 308. They're all quite similar. They're semi-auto. You have the bolt carrier going back and forth. Very similar, just different. So um, there's that. So next we can take a look at the magazine issue with the uh, insertion, over insertion. We can take a quick look here at these two rifles and just see the differences. Let's just get that out of the way. that out of the way. So like I mentioned before, it is possible to over insert magazines. So you can, you know, it is possible to come too far and it is stopped by the bolt catch. But, um, you know, it can come too far and then it can drop down like it. As soon as you release, it can drop down, but there are times where it sticks up against the bolt and then when you go to close the bolt it hits the back of the magazine and you can see also that the bolt can kind of chew the top rear of your polymer magazines um, obviously you won't have that issue with steel magazines but uh, the over insertion issue is kind of the same you can go as far as the magazine allows here of course, on an empty magazine, that is not a problem because the spring on the follower keeps it down immediately. But of course, when you have rounds in a magazine, a couple of them, that follower's down low. So it is possible for it to kind of stick there and hang up a little bit. So I've just gotten used to sweeping back just in case magazines do drop free but I sweep back to make sure it's clear and then as I insert I go in and down on my way to the handguard again for firing position just to change a process for me I don't think it's a big deal but you know there are people who think that that should never happen but for comparison here is the sporter lower and I can show you that it essentially does the same thing now where this differs is the bolt um, of an AR or similar rifle compared to a 180 is the way that they're designed just there's a little more clearance in in this style of rifle as compared to the Siberian or, or this particular 180-ish style of rifle this is a bit more blocky and <clears throat> when it comes forward these edges here can snag on your magazine seemingly a little bit more frequently so yeah and as you can see this is my cheap work at you know instead of an o-ring here i didn't have one small enough it physically just would not close with an o-ring on this lug so a little strip of tape here um keeps that and here i guess uh just keeps that really snug it's not moving at all anymore and i can still get the pin in and out really easy but that kind of covers the magazine over insertion issue like i said it's it's a training issue as far as i'm concerned um it happens a little bit more frequently with the siberian than it does an atrs or similar rifle and if we want we can take a quick look at it. <clears throat> the differences in the bolts here to explain that 
You can see the difference here in the, the bolt design. The way, I don't know, just the, the front end of this bolt is, is angled. I don't know if that has something to do with it versus this sharp edge on the corners, if that's where I'm hanging up. But it is actually also possible for the bolt face to snag the magazine as it's it does seem to over insert a little bit further than the sport anyway what's nice is that it's one piece and comes out quite easy i will uh, post some better up close pictures of the interior here of any wear there really isn't any wear inside the upper whatsoever aside from this small portion at the rear and I'll include some pictures here. There's just some small grooves at the back where the bolt slides back because it looks like the flat in the upper receiver here was stopped right there and it's a bit rounded in this section so it's just getting flattened out by the bolt right there but I don't expect to see that getting any worse or being a problem since the bolt rides back on the rails and not on anything else. This sits in the upper and these uh, sit in the upper and the bolt just rides on these guide rods and it is quite smooth. It's pretty slick. And then as you can see the cutout right here is for the charging handle. That's where the little tab on the charging handle here grabs the bolt and pulls it back and that's what also makes it non-reciprocating. Haven't had any issues yet with this divot. You can see there is a slight amount of wear. How bad that gets over time we'll see. I do a lot of drills and dry fire so we'll see if mine wears quicker than someone else. Um, another thing I can mention is the, the piston. It will rattle with the bolt back, um, but it would, there's a tiny little bit of something there. But I don't know, I don't think that's a big deal. Somebody else might, if they're super ninja, worried about noise, but it goes bang, so whatever no big deal for me uh like i mentioned the magazine feed lips though just from that over insertion i can see some of the magazines now they're starting to some of them got chewed up a little bit the hera mag the steel mag i mean there's a mark there but it's nothing in comparison to the cross mags are getting flattened just a little bit Um, so that's most of this here. We'll put it back together and show you some of the accuracy testing, maybe some of the shooting that I've been doing. encouraging than the other stuff, hey? Okay, so it took me a shot to get on paper here, uh, putting the arc and scope on the Siberian for the first time. Uh, this is the first group I shot with some 55 grain Federal Independence, and this is the second. Uh, it was a bit chilly uh, with the winds uh, gusting quite a bit, but you'll probably see that in the video. The IMI 855 um, was a bit spread out here, but then not too bad. XTAC 62 grain was decent. Um, 
most of the way along here really this is a bit spread out but no big deal and then finally the Hornady 73 grain ELD uh, did pretty well thought I was doing amazing here until I you know you just can't keep a full group of five I guess and, and pull one up top but this is pretty good too so all in all pretty darn good here I guess for a semi but you know I'm not going to be feeding it this all that often it's going to get bulk ammo so I'll throw up a few pictures of uh, range buddy there where it measures this out for you so you can see exactly what it is and we'll leave it at that thanks guys take care